Hey guys, in today's micro lecture, we're going to talk about assessing the pupils. Now as a paramedic, one of the things that you will do routinely is to look into the patient's eyes and look at what's going on with their pupils. They can tell you a whole lot about how much oxygen the brain is receiving, as well as a range of different cardiovascular diseases that present in the eyes. Now for the purposes of this, this lecture, we're just going to take a look at the different pupil sizes and help you guys to see what is normal and abnormal. But first, let's talk about when we would actually do this. So you arrived on scene at the, uh, at the patient's address. When you, you say, hello, ambulance, and you greet them by shaking their hand um, and they tell you their name. Now, straight away, you can look into their eyes. Yes, we do danger, response, airway, breathing, circulation. But you can also look at their face, look at their size, look at their general appearance. One of the things you can do in all of that, which is part of the patient assessment triangle that we've talked about previously, is to look at their overall appearance. And one of the things is to look into their eyes. Now, pupils should be nice and round, um, and they should be dark black, and they should both react equally when you shine a light into them. Now, generally speaking, we do tend to use pen torches that are medical grade. And here's a whole range, if you just Google pen torches, as I've done up here, all these different torches come up. Some of them have these pupil pupillary um, grades on the side, which will help you to work out the number, which is fantastic. Try and avoid ones that are gonna, the LED ones that are gonna cause your patient discomfort. So basically just choose one of your very basic ones. I mean, it's, it's absolutely your choice, but for patient comfort, you try not to blind them when you're shining it in their eyes. Now on this pupillary scale, as you can see, it's measured in millimeters and it goes from one to eight. And I'm sure it does go to nine and 10 as well. Um, as you can see here, uh, two to six is considered normal. Now just remember that when the patient is in a light room, then the pupils are gonna be really small because the, 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 the pupils don't need to let in so much light, so they're gonna be pretty small. As opposed to a dark room, your pupils are gonna be quite big. Now there are some other things that can affect the pupillary response and that includes excitatory drugs. Now when that happens, when you have excitatory drugs, the pupils tend to be bigger because you're stimulating the sympathetic nervous system and it dilates the pupils to allow light in and uh, as, a, as a consequence of stimulating this, the, the sympathetic nervous system, the pupils get bigger as opposed to, to drugs that will make you, um, that will actually cause um, the absolute opposite of stimulation. Um, therefore, you will get an inhibition of the pupils and a constriction of the pupils, such as opioids. So when we use the term pinpoint pupils, we're generally talking number one. And these patients need to really be given a drug called naloxone or Narcan so that you can reverse that. Now, when you're using a pen light to uh, assess a patient's eyes, Make sure that the patient has acclimatized to the room that they're in. Get the pen torch and shine it into the eye like this and out, and then likewise in and out, and then shine it into the middle. Now, in and out like this, you're assessing one pupil. Again, assessing the pupil individually. Shining the torch into the middle, you're assessing both of them at the same time. Just remember, guys, that there are three nerves that control the eyes, one that control the, the muscles in and out, and one that controls them up and down and left and right. So different muscles control different parts of the eyes. So that's a whistle-stop tour of pupillary assessment. I hope you've enjoyed the micro lecture. My name's Sam Willis and I look forward to talking to you again shortly. Take care.